Okay, very good. I'd like to show you my ecological dry toilet down this way in the middle of nature. And we actually have two ecological dry toilets. One for sitting and another for squatting. We actually promote the squatting version more because in the squatting position, it's better for people's health. There's less problems with uh, constipation, hemorrhoids, and, and other things. It's also more hygienic, especially thinking about women, because in a squatting position, they're not going to touch anything with their private parts. They're not worried about there being some bacteria on the seat. There's no seat. And it's more ac uh, accessible for little children, right? And so, the use is squatting like this. The urine goes into the funnel in the front part. And the feces, of course, fall into the back part. Very separate, so they don't get mixed. After each use, the feces are covered with a dry material, like in this case, it's sawdust and wood ash. Sior y sandra. There's a little bit of wind blowing the other direction right now. It's not always quite that strong. And, um, and so we have the feces covered up. The smell's not coming in. The flies aren't going in to lay eggs. And uh, so we don't have an emergency to throw it into the river and contaminate the river and other people's drinking water. Right? So in this case, we're collecting the feces just in a rice sack. And when it's full, we close it, we put the date on it to know when six months has finished. In that time, everything that was a disease organism has died, and we have soil. This is a sample that's now over a year old, right? And it's just soil, right? We can even open it. Doesn't smell of anything, really and uh, it's ready to go back to the soil in the gardens, right? Um, here we have rainwater from the roof that comes back via this hose in the wall to wash our hands, right? And it's got a flow regulator so that we get enough water to wash our hands, but we're not emptying the tank too quickly. And it rains a lot here in Peru, so this almost always stays very full. Um, we also have this other one which is for sitting, right? This is similar to the ones that we're building in Kisaleo. This has a bench at the same height as a normal uh, sit-down flush toilet, only it's all a bench, right? And, and so it's got the normal plastic toilet seat that people are accustomed to. In this case we have a mesh, this gray mesh, gets removed when it's going to be used. That's just there for when it's not in use so that the flies can't be coming and going, right? This particular one gets more use. Most people here in Ecuador are accustomed to doing their business sitting, especially uh, city people, right? And, um, and so this also has another funnel down inside here for collecting the urine very separate from the feces, right? And, um, and so there we can see the funnel and we can see the rice sack which is starting to get full, right? And it, the rice sack isn't terrible, we just see a pile of wood ash and sawdust, right? And so after each use, we lift the toilet seat and in this case, we have pre-measured amounts of sawdust with the wood ash to deposit on top, right? And uh, so everything is fine. Except that today there's a few flies making me look bad. And um, we have reading material for the users, right? So they can understand why we apply this different system. This is something we published in the local newspaper here in Puyo, and it emphasizes the uh, divorce of this couple, right? which of course was never married. And this photo is our same uh, toilet for squatting here, and uh, 
and we've uh, tried to draw as much attention as possible to the instructions so that people are using it properly, right? And because um, this is a system where it depends on the users. The users have to use it correctly, right? There's a little bit more user participation. It's not just going to the flush toilet and pushing the lever down and everything disappears usually going into the river, right? And uh, especially here in Ecuador, that's the case with all of them. Um, another bit of information I didn't mention is that the toilet paper can just go straight in with the feces in the rice sack. And so that's much better. Then no one has to have contact with it. It's helping to continue absorbing, to continue to absorb liquids. And it decomposes in the same time that the feces decompose. Right, so we never see it again. In, in Ecuador, people don't flush the, the toilet paper in flush toilets because they're afraid that the pipes will get clogged. Right? And so they throw it all in the trash, and then people who are looking for recyclables are digging through other people's used toilet paper, which is not a very sanitary idea. And um, let's have a look in the back part. In the back part, we can see what happens with the urine. Very good. Now we're going to see what happens with the urine. All right, we have it separated in the funnel up above, and then it comes out of the structure via this hose, which is set into the cement. All right? I don't know if you can see this. And um, we're doing more recycling here with these three liter cola bottles, right? This has a hole cut into it, and it just gets inserted there. The urine falls into this. This is an interesting little port part because the urine can come very quickly here, right? And it's not backing up into the part where people are, right? So then it has time to go into the perforated hose. This is just a half inch pl black plastic hose that they use for electrical connections. So it's the cheapest hose available here in Ecuador it costs about 12 cents a meter. And we have, in this case, 17 meters of it stretched out, more or less on a contour with a slight slope down. And we have little holes in it about every 30 centimeters uh, punctured into the holes and a little piece of a lollipop stick stuck into that hole. It's an interesting thing because lollipop sticks are little pipes. And this gives us nice, well-formed, uniform holes that the urine comes out. And it's a very curious thing because in Europe, everyone who works in ecological sanitation will swear that this is impossible, right? They've tried it and the holes all get plugged with a precipitate that comes out of the urine. And, and in fact, we can see that precipitate here in the bottle, the brown sludge there. It has a name called struvite, right? And, um, but we've never had the holes get plugged. And I'm convinced that this is a biodiversity issue because I'm convinced that some organism, whether it's an ant or a bacteria or something, is eating the struvite before it plugs the hole, right? And among other things, there's lots of different holes, right? So for example, if the one hole were to get plugged for a time, then the urine's going into another one and that one is having more time to decompose. Right. And um, in any way, it disappears and it's doing something good. It's feeding the trees. And so we can fill this with urine here and, and then uh, fertilize the plants just by lowering the hose. Right. So just by gravity. And this is not plugged a couple times. It wants to plug a little bit and then, then it opens itself up. Right. And, and we've done this many times. And you know, it's built to be carried on the back, you know, so, so it's all very nicely designed, comfortable to. The, the human fertilizer, the, the feces, when they're decomposed, it's very good soil for, for anything that you want. It's lots of organic material, and, and so we, uh, we use it in, uh, in planting different plants when we're reproducing forest trees here or fruit trees. Uh, different things and um, I've been building these for over 10 years and my experience has always been that 
my wife, who's an expert on plants, always has somewhere that she wants the the soil. You know, she and, and she's not. It, we're never just throwing it somewhere to get it out of the way. There's always a matter of oh, we need a shovel full here. We need another shovel full here. We need a bag to mix in here. More bags <laughs> and uh, and uh, and keep moving it in and. Um, and, and so, yeah, this is one of the things most lacking in Amazonian soils, you know, organic material, right? And, um, and lacking in lots of soils throughout the world with uh, soil erosion, right? So, so this is organic material that will help hold the humidity in the soil, helping people adapt to the droughts that come with global climate disruption. So here you receive a visitor Hyatt Ethno Botanical Park, and and we have thousands of visitors in the year, right? In a, in a very good year, we can have a, about 10,000 uh, visitors here to the park. We get a lot of um, Ecuadorian high school and college groups. We get a lot of Ecuadorian families, especially the Ecuadorian families that are living in other countries. And then when they come back and they're on vacation, they visit places like Omayeri. And what do people think of your ecological toilet? Yeah, people are very surprised. You know, at, at first, you know, people are some... It depends on the person, of course. Sometimes people are a little bit surprised. But um, uh, people, are, in the end, are, are usually very positively surprised. You know, and they realize, you know, we explain about how there's no wastewater treatment in Ecuador and how it all goes straight into the rivers. And Sooner or later, someone's drinking it, or swimming in it, or fishing in it, or washing clothes in it, and and that, of course, is totally illogical, you know. And, and that's that's a matter of what we call fecophobia, the irrational fear of feces, right? And you know, if we don't think about things rationally, we can do irrational things like throwing it into other people's drinking water, right? And um, and so. So people people take note of it and um, they're very interested. The um, and we never know how many replicate the idea because you know there's nothing nothing hidden in here. There's no you know patented insert you know from our factories or whatever. You know it's just the concept, the idea. You know the the building with ferro cement is a little bit new for for some people, but it's not. It's not anything patented by any means. You know, there's lots of information on the internet about ferro cement, and um, and so people get very interested, especially in places where there's not a whole lot of other options, right? Where where there's not running water, and uh, and where it, you know it's small streams, and um, and so in Ecuador there's now about uh, 200, more than 200 of these. Um, built by myself and people I have taught and other people. The, the city of Cuenca has gotten very interested in this, especially in the outlying neighborhoods that they can't give pipe water to or uh, sewer lines. Right? I'm not sure how many they've built yet, but they have uh, quite a few. And, um, and so, so it's, it's an interesting thing. And, and with this, you know, it seems sort of primitive, but it's actually one of the simplest ways for us to reduce our environmental impact, our ecological footprint, right? Because um, when we use running water, it almost always has a certain amount of petroleum invested in it for pumping and treatment and everything, and the chemicals that go into it and everything. And um, with this, we're not using water. You know, we just have a little bit of rainwater from the roof to wash our hands, and uh, we can use a wet rag sometimes for washing, for cleaning the floor. And um, we're not needing chemicals, we're not needing to transport things far away, and uh, even most importantly we're not um, contaminating other people's water. And instead, we're taking advantage of all the nutrients, putting it back into the soil so that the plants can be productive again.